just uh, quickly now on this video because um, reports w with all kind of training we always take the view that if we can show you how to put the information into the computer correctly you will obviously get the information out of the computer correctly so um, doing reports is fairly straightforward um, you just more or less click and look you can't do any data entry but I'll just show you a few little tips and tricks in here for example um, the uh, tr item transaction Item transaction is a good report because it gives you a lot of detail. So if I double click on item transaction, see the way it's bringing up this report um, here. And um, you're looking at all the incomes on the top left, then it goes down into all of the expenses. Just one little point there. Notice the way cattle sales, uh, see the way I have two receipts for cattle sales, 1,200 euro and I have 800 euro. But notice the way there's no, no subtotal under the 1,200 and the 800. So I'd have to add the two of them together mentally to see what was my total for the for that for that year for for that um, for that particular income of cattle sales. But you can customize all these reports. So if I go down to page setup, for example, you get this screen. So you can try you can do trial and error to see what do all of these options do for you. But if I come down here, for example, I just show you one place where this would be useful. If I say my total levels goes to 3, I go OK. See the way it's, then we have the 1200 and the 800 and now subtotal to two, 2000. So you have subtotals in there better. See further down here, I have the subtotal come in. So you can customize, just use the um, page setup. And uh, you can do a trial and error thing. You can go into page setup and say, well, if I take the tick out of that and go, OK, what will it do? You can try all those things. You can't do any harm. Um, if, if You can always reset things back to the way they came when we supplied the software anyway. The other thing you can do uh, in here is we click on properties. Um, you can change the period. So I could change from back to 2008 if I want. And it, there's a number of filters in here. that What I would suggest, rather than me showing you how to use them all separately, I would just recommend that you come in here and try one at a time. See what it does come back, reset it, try a different one. And it's a bit of trial and error, but you can't really do any, um, you can't do any harm because you're just looking at information. You're not putting any information in. Just to show you how the reports kind of hang off each other, I'll just get out of my item transaction. See my profit and loss. If I double click on my profit and loss, this would obviously be a report that you're particularly interested. See the way I have my income. So it says my bull sales. You know, you see the cattle sales here, I have 2,000. Now if I double click on the 2000, it drills down and it gives me the detail of where the 2000 came from. And actually, you notice the way up on the top left, it says item transaction. So when you, double, when you drill down from the profit and loss, you get the item transaction report. Now if I double click on the 1200 here, so if you double click on one of the transactions, see the way it goes back into the actual uh, record where you enter that information so you can see all the detail about the check number and you could actually change the figures there as well if you if you need to so there's a lot of drill down in the report so if you drill down on the line it goes further and it goes further and that drill down can be quite useful to help you analyze information for your farm so we get out of the profit and loss and back to my list of reports um, the one thing we always say to farmers um, using the accounts do the accounts for your own information not for somebody else's information it doesn't make sense really just to fill out all your information just to give it to the accountant um, you know because the accountant can easily put those records into their computer as well you know if you're going to make the effort and put the time in to keep all of your financial records in good shape it's really for your own information number one and that's where you get the benefit from your actual time investment rather than um, you know doing it for somebody else uh, the last report I'm just going to show you because it's, it's a report that a lot of people will use and just show you one little trick on how to use it well. If I come into Chagas Profit Monitor and I double click on this report, um, what this will actually do is it'll, it'll show the information exactly the way Chagas would want to see it because a lot of farms will have incomes that are not relevant to the Chagas um, profit monitor and they might have expenses that are not relevant to Chagas profit monitor so we have a way of linking your incomes with their incomes and your expenses with their expenses so for example if I come into properties and um, see the way I have uh, IFC items here and I have profit monitor codes here so um, uh, in this particular version of the software they're all linked so um, we're pretty much starting off with a list of incomes and expenses that relate purely to uh, what Chagas would be interested in in terms of a profit monitor. But I'll just show you how we can you can keep your accounts. If I go back into setup and go back into um, incomes, 
um, and you come new down here. So if you have another income called, um, if you have free range chickens for example, or something that's not necessarily part of a profit monitor system, um, you can set up your own um, income codes. And let's say I come into expenses and I go, and I go an expense for the free range chickens. I just want to show you how you can control the quality of the information that's feeding through into the profit monitor. So if I go back into reports, back into Jagger's profit monitor, I go into my properties. You see the way I have two items here and they're not linked at all. Now, for if Chagas at any stage want to get information on these particular income and expenses, you can then link it up by doing this. So you can say that uh, chicken feed is going to be linked to one of the Chagas incomes or expenses as well. So a relatively minor point in this case, but the list of income and uh, the reason I mentioned this, the, the version of the software I have here, everything is kind of nice and neatly linked as it is. Um, whereas the version that you have, there might be a lot. You see this blank cell here. Just be careful with this. Just come into this, uh, go into properties in the Chagas Profit Monitor and make sure that this column here, see this third column, the white column, Profit Monitor Code. Make sure that you make the effort to link your incomes with the Chagas corresponding incomes and make sure that you spend time linking your expenses with the Chagas corresponding e expenses. And that means that the Chagas report that you have in here is going to be exactly what they want with no extra stuff that's you know messing up the figures it'll be just exactly the way it should be one very quick thing just in case you don't spot this um, when you're doing a Chagas profit monitor you can link into the stock program as well if you click on view stock reports and this links into the stock program where you can get a very detailed breakdown of the cattle at the start of the year the cattle at the end of the year and all of the movements of the cattle in and out in between so make sure you spot that because that does a huge amount of number crunching for um, the input sheets for the profit monitor um, system. So um, I think I'm going to leave it there. Um, the main thing with these training videos is not make them too long. Try and get at the, the kind of the core parts of it without getting too um, too bogged down in detail. Um, so just to recap again, we have set up. Um, we're, which is important to get the whole structure right at the start. Transactions is putting in the records for um, each for one month at a time. Bank reconciliation when you have all, all the records in for one month, um, then you know you, uh, we would recommend you do a bank rec so you prove that you have it to the cent exactly the way um, th the way it is in the bank statement. Then reports. And we'll do a training video in a bit. Uh, the next video we'll do on budgeting. We'll show you that in a little bit. So we'll leave that one now for, for the moment.